Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, October 29th, 5.08 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida with the big show. That's the Friday night edition of the Revere Market Insight video where we take a look back at the prior week, take a look ahead at the key levels for next week, and update the world-famous 21 over 21 leaders list. Let's get right into it. State of the market. Green across the screen, if you look over here at the trend gauge, we've got leaders. We went to uh, we went from neutral to up on October 14th, seeing some really good action in leaders. So they're flashing green bullish uptrend. And then all three time frames that we track the major indexes, indices, indexes against uh, short term 21 day exponential moving average, medium term 50 day moving average, long term 200 day moving average. All five of the major indexes are trending above these levels. So we're bullish across all three time frames. And when you see bullish on market leaders and bullish across all three time frames, we are at our as close to our maximum exposure as possible provided we get good entries in leading stocks and leading sectors. And uh, that's where we are. That's where we came into the week and that's where we're exiting the week as it was, uh, we had a, a, a strong start to the week, a little bit of a wiggle down Tuesday and Wednesday where some leaders got hit, but very strong close to the week on Thursday and Friday. So what just happened today, we had a gap down. The gap down was because of Apple and Amazon uh, poor reaction to their earnings. And we saw a gap down at the open of uh, three quarters of a percent on the NASDAQ 100 and a half a percent on the S&P 500. But we put in the bottom uh, very quickly and then made a nice quick recovery and we closed at the high of the day. So all things considered, when you've got two major bellwethers, Apple and Amazon, uh, having the worst earnings report in recent memory and uh, they open up down four or five percent and they close down two percent and the market closes at the high of the day that's as good a scenario as you could ask for if you're a bull as far as growth stocks are concerned the g5 that's the growth five a collection of five etf uh etf growth etfs that we track uh, decent day up 0.30 percent a little bit of a mixed bag there the uh, RK ARKK uh, negative on the day um, I need to take a closer look at the holdings on there I've been reading some things that Kathy Wood is averaging down on some ugly looking stocks and the biggest holding Tesla up 3.4 percent on the day not quite sure why uh, that was red I'll be looking at that over the weekend so S&P 500 up two tenths of a percent when you open with a gap down of 0.5 uh, percent you close near the high of the day plus 0.2 percent got to be good with that biggest impre uh, most impressive though Nasdaq 100 gapping down, as I said, three quarters of a percent and finishing up a half of a percent on the day. Uh, Tesla, yeah, up 3.4%, NVIDIA up 2.5%, Microsoft up 2.2%, Netflix up 2.4%, Google up 1.5%, Facebook up 2.1%, Amazon and Apple, as I said, dragging it down, down near 2%, but definitely best case for the bulls. Dow Jones Industrial Average up a quarter percent, mid caps and small caps just about flat on the day. Uh, mid caps slightly positive, small caps uh, slightly negative. Across all three of um, the uh, the indexes that are diversified, the S&P 500, the mid cap 400 and the Russell 2000. It was the growth component of all three of those that carried the day as the value half was down on all three of those and the growth more than made up for it. Uh, good day out of growth today. So let's get to the market facts and the charts. But first let's get to the team here at Revere, completely transparent. Make sure you check out our podcast uh, this weekend. A lot of fun with that one. Uh, if you're interested in a, in a conflict-free 
registered investment advisor. Yes, we're a fiduciary and we're completely transparent. We've got videos going back to 2014 out on Daily Market Insight. You can go back at any period and see what we thought about uh, what was going on in the market and what we were doing for our clients, what our read on the market was. Try getting that out of uh, any other registered investment advisor. You won't find it. You also won't find uh, a stop loss strategy to keep you from losing big when the market turns south. And uh, go check out what we were doing in uh, March of uh, 2020 with COVID and what we were doing in December of 2018 when we had the, uh, the taper tantrum. Uh, and then how we got back in after those. It's all there, never edited, never taken down. Check it out if you're interested in talking to any of us. The Big Cheese, the head honcho, CFA Dan Stewart here, Dan at revereasset.com. He'll probably answer the phone if you call too. Tim, our uh, chief strategist, expert at interasset, interasset correlation and short-term uh, indicators. Mural, our very lovely office manager, uh, handles all the paperwork for onboarding of new clients. Junior portfolio managers and analysts, Alex and Hunter. And this is uh, me and my face for radio over here on the far right. You can email any of us. It's our, just our first name at revereasset.com or you can call 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. All right, let's hit the good stuff now. So uh, the market facts. Been in the uptrend since 1014. Central put call ratio, US dollar and rates. I want to talk about the US dollar very quickly. We saw a big move down yesterday, very bullish for stocks. Stocks had a great day, but we saw a slingshot back up today. Uh, there's a saying on Wall Street, from failed moves come fast moves. We got to keep a close eye on this because we had a breakdown Thursday uh, and a big snap back. This is a big move, eight tenths of a percent, uh, and recovered all of the losses uh, and finished at the high for the week, actually a two, three week high. Um, we gotta, we're going to keep an eye on this next week. Didn't seem to impact stocks at all today, as uh, although it was trending higher during the day, stocks continued to trend higher. So a little bit of a disconnect there. Stocks have been really following what's been going on and doing uh, the opposite of what the dollar does. Dollar down, stocks up. Dollar up, stocks down. So uh, we do need to keep an eye on that. Interest rates. Let's re take a quick look at the TNX. I did read that the 30-year and the 20-year got inverted today. I don't have the yield curve here, uh, but you see we pulled back this week on interest rates, sitting right at the 21-day exponential moving average. Uh, bull case, very clear. As long as we stay above the 21 and the 50-day moving average, we will continue to be uh, as close to invested as possible unless we start breaking some of the levels. And then ultimately the bear case, if we would break down below 44.30, that's the prior breakout level, uh, we would pretty much be stopped out on just about everything that we own if we were to give that much back. Um, I talked about uh, the gap down, the quick recovery, how it was Amazon and Apple. Leading sectors on the day, steel stocks, and we're going to talk about steel when we get into the 21 over 21. SOC strong today, software, and the dollar strong. Uh, on the downside, oils, uh, gold, silver, and uh, gold and silver stocks and real estate were weak. So right now, we're closing the week at 4605. Let's go to the S&P 500 chart here now. 4605, new all-time highs. Uh, what do we need to be concerned about? Well, definitely best case for the bulls for the close on the week, especially considering uh, the, the Tuesday reversal and the down the close at the bottom of the range uh, on uh, Wednesday. In fact, this three candle combination here is a bearish candle combination called an, an evening star, but uh, it was negated by the action of Thursday and Friday. So you can see here this 45, 46 area uh, those are the prior all-time highs. Uh, good news, the ADMA is at 45.59, so we've got our first EMA above the prior all-time high breakout level. So uh, that's the first level of support on the pullback. The more levels you get of these moving averages uh, as they get higher, uh, the more gains we're going to be able to lock in for clients and the more uh, support you get should the market start consolidating. So we've got the ADMA above the prior all-time high. 
Next down to that is the rising 21 day exponential moving average, basically right at the, the 4,500 area. So that's 2.4% lower. Uh, we've now got the 923 high. Uh, the, the 50 day moving average is still above uh, the uh, 923 high. 50 day moving average being at 4459. The 923 high is at 4465. I've got these reversed, but the 50 day moving average will catch will catch above this prior high next week. And again, same situation as the moving averages come up and they get above prior support levels. That's more support in the case of a pullback. Uh, we get uh, under so really the 4459 50 day moving average. It's also now above this breakout level, so that's a really good sign. Uh, the prior area of concern that we had, if we would get into the pullback range at 4430, uh, we've got the 50 day moving average above that now. Again, a very good sign. 4300 is our bearish line in the sand, and then 9.4% lower is the 200 day moving average. Uh, study of bear markets show that we top about 12% above uh, the 200 day moving average and then we can go up to 15% on average below that if we get a severe bear market. So we're aware of all these numbers, we're aware of where the, the indexes are at and we're aware of what the leaders are doing and we've got a bull case and a bear case and that's what we'll stick with. So going into next week, let's look at the uh, NASDAQ 100. Look how nicely this is trending along with relative strength all week above the ADMA closing at all-time highs. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, continued relative weakness for three weeks, just the opposite of what you see with the NASDAQ 100. These things, they're like a tag team. Uh, they trade off on relative strength when one's strong, the other one's weak. When one's weak, the other one's strong uh, at all-time highs, but relatively weak compared to the S&P 500 and certainly the NASDAQ 100. Uh, mid caps, MDY, we had a breakout which failed, came down, but we bounced off the 21. We're right back near this pivot area. In fact, right back above it, closing at 509 for the week. So we broke out, tested it, back down to the 21, back above the breakout level and small caps, IWM. Uh, Two harsh days down, we've recovered most of it. We did make the high on Tuesday and didn't recover that though. So uh, that's a negative divergence. You can see the negative relative strength over the, for the last two and a half weeks uh, in small caps. Let's break this down and let's go to the value portion now, IWN. You can see that continues to be weak uh, and another a failed breakout on that. Uh, and then IWO, the the uh, growth portion of it uh, still holding this breakout uh, that happened on uh, 1014 along with the follow through day. We, we undercut it but have reclaimed it, tested the 21 and the 50 on any pullbacks, but they're resolving higher. Although strength is relatively weak compared to the big caps, the money's been flown into the big caps, but um, growth leaders are holding up fine. Uh, the G5 index is holding up five, is holding up fine, and uh, as long as the leaders hold up fine, we'll continue to be in those strongest stocks in the strongest sectors in the market. So that's our index look. Let's look at uh, the 21 over 21 list, and let's start out with uh, some stocks that we cut from last week's leaders list. So we're going to start off with. Um, upstart. This had been uh, one of the first stocks out and sometimes you just go, I mean it doubled, it went from 200 to 400. Sometimes it's just time to build a base uh, and this has pulled back from 400 to the 320 area. Every time now it tries to get back above the 21 day exponential moving average, it's failed. In fact it tried it early today in, an, in a big sign of strength. Let's look at this five minute chart here. Gap up but it gave it, gave it up before 9.50. Uh, it gave up all of that and then trended lower on the day into this 320 area and then sideways. So uh, we're holding the bottom Tuesday's lows, but it would not surprise me if we tested the 50 day moving average. We've sold most of our uh, upstart. We just have a very small 1% position in it. Uh, we locked in 80% gains prior and then re-entered it uh, on this pullback and initial bounce off the uh, 21 day exponential moving average. 
uh, and then added to it, but sold most of it, as I mentioned, when we broke back through the 21 and we can't we can't seem to get back above the 21. That's a key level for right now. So Upstart came off the list. Next stock that came off the list is Raytheon. Uh, volatility uh, that resolved to the downside on its earnings report. 21 day has rolled over and look at the lack of relative strength on RTX uh, over the past three weeks, removed from the 21 over 21 list. Palo Alto uh, acted really ugly early in the week, broke below the 21, closed the week strong, but look at the wedging on the volume. The selling volume is way above the, um, the volume on the rebound that's why i took it off the list even though it closed back above and we own crowdstrike which is uh, in the same sector as that so we do have representation of that sector and uh, no reason to have a weak stock relatively uh, on that list when we've got one that's much stronger uh, and devon dvn was taken off uh, Still above the 21, but we bought an oil stock that's uh, stronger than it, so we took it off, plus it has earnings next week. This could very easily announce great earnings and uh, some strength come in right now. It's just uh, consolidating very nicely after a 25% run off the pivot, uh, so keep a close eye on Devin when it reports earnings next week. I know we will be. So those four were eliminated. Let's talk about... Uh, what got added. Uh, we've got, let me show the entire list here. We've got uh, 14 industry groups and 19 sectors represented. The lower numbered ones represent how long it's been on the list. The newer, the higher numbers starting with 21 are uh, the ones that were most recently added. So let's get into the new ones. We've got uh, four, four that were added, two of which we own. Uh, Nucor, I could have added uh, any of these four onto it. I'm gonna show all four of them. Uh, Nucor has best relative strength rating at a 95. Also acting well, Steel Dynamics, STLD. Uh, also acting well, uh, CLF. Cleveland Cliffs. In fact, you could argue that this is the better of them because of this big strength uh, after its earnings move up in the days prior to it, but it has pulled back. Uh, and then uh, X had the X marks the spot. Big move today. Gap up on big volume, 225% volume. Was lagging prior to that. Put in a similar handle just like they did. Great reaction to earnings, 155% uh, earnings growth and earned 536. Now all of these have lower estimates for next year. Uh, so we, we will keep that in mind as we watch them. They are cyclical stocks, but when you see four in the same group, all putting in a very similar pattern, you got to pay attention to the group. So we added one on there, Nucor. Enphase. Uh, also added this week, wished I would have bought this. I didn't. Um, big gap up, 629% volume up 25% on its earnings report. Big break out of this double volume, uh, double bottom beautiful pattern followed through on day two and day three uh, big leader needs to be on there we need to watch it solars are acting well this is a leading stock in the solars pull back to the five or the ADMA would represent uh, the first uh, low risk entry point and and uh, wider than normal stop you would need at this point though that's why I want to see a pullback which which would be the bottom of the gap up day su uh, new addition to the portfolio Beautiful cup and handle breakout, big volume, 177% volume. While oil stocks are consolidating, this one's breaking out and going higher. So it's an early leader in the group. If the group falters that might pull this down. If the group gets strength, this was the first one out. That's the one you want to own is the early leader. So uh, liking that a lot. And then we also added uh, a real estate stock. But uh, the fourth one added... Uh, this week was another stock that we bought. Hold on. It's Dexcom. So Dexcom reported earnings. Look at this five-minute chart. You see this a lot. First thing we want to do is, oh, try to break out, trigger all those stocks. This is the algorithms. Sell it down, sell it down, sell it down, trigger all the stops below the prior two days, get everybody out, then start rallying again. And then here was the, here's the key area. 
I saw this, I set an alert above uh, that area. We got this right here, uh, bought it, took off for the rest of the day. I wish they all acted like this after we bought them, but Dexcom added to the portfolio, 161% volume on its earnings report, up 9% on the day. Beautiful breakout out of this short flat base. So those are the four new ones. Now uh, the repeats. JB Hunt continues to uh, consolidate uh, nicely over the ADMA after its earnings gap. Bros, all-time highs, uh, riding the ADMA higher. That's just beautiful. Goldman Sachs consolidated this week at the top of its base. CrowdStrike, a uh, little bit of squirrely action for three days this week. Uh, decent close, bounced off the 21 after the failed breakout. Uh, on Tuesday when the market reversed and pulled back. This came back with it, but bounced where it needed to at the 21. Zscaler actually might be a little bit stronger than this if you check that chart out. LYV, just going sideways. Really lack of relative strength on this one. Needs to get moving. It does have earnings next week. SI, Silvergate, gap down on earnings, but quickly got above the high of the gap down day. That's key. Uh, and anytime it's testing the 21 since then, it's bouncing. So we'd like to see that. Apps, digital turbine, just going sideways over the last two weeks with earnings next week. Net, just strong as morning dog's breath. Two-day pullback, third day undercut. We started taking, nibbling back on this as we got stopped out down here when it broke the 50-day moving average. Really waited too long to get back into it. Uh, but when something just shows the strength that this is showing, sometimes you just got to look for uh, any opportunity to get into it. And we've already got some decent gains on this, even though we bought it. Extended versus a regular chart, but not versus the ADMA. And that's what we'll be using on our stop. That's one way to get in. You got to use a quicker stop than normal. You got to size it smaller than normal. But uh, sometimes a mental health buy uh, gets rid of FOMO. ETHE, sorry, I skipped one. ETHE, Ethereum, hold on one second, I went too fast. Okay, here it is. ETHE, all time highs. What can you say about that? Uh, don't own it. SBNY, Banks consolidated this week. This one's holding right on the 21 where it needs to. This is kind of a bellwether for regional banks. Uh, as I said, right on the 21. If interest rates drop, this is going to drop. If the interest rates go higher, I would expect this one to go higher. That's been the correlation recently anyway. CBRE, we added this. It's been on the 2121 list for a while, but we finally pulled the trigger on its earnings report this week where it did the same thing. Uh, that I mentioned. Let's take a look at a five-minute chart here. Gap down, get rid of all the sellers, over, clean them out over the prior couple of days, rally, and then it's just really gone sideways since then, since it cleared everybody out uh, at the bottom. So not the strongest of breakouts, uh, but at the top of its range after getting rid of uh, the sellers down near this 100 level. Tesla, beautiful, uh, strongest one of the strongest stocks in the market, all-time high closes, great reaction since its earnings report, our second largest position uh, in Grotection. Bill consolidating right on the 21 earnings next week. Affirm continues to just trudge higher along the ADMA. Ambarella uh, sold a little bit this week uh, to take some off the table when the market was looking weak, added half of that sell back this week on this uh, below average volume inside day. Uh, our biggest position in the portfolio. Datadog, big breakout here, Tredge sideways, pulled back along with the market, bounced right where it needed to off of the 21 and strong days Thursday and Friday. And Mosaic, uh, pull back, bounced off the 21, consolidating earnings next week. Uh, these, this chemical fertilizer uh, our, our chemical agriculture group is acting pretty well, but they do have some earnings coming up. That's going to wrap it. That's your 21 over 21 list. As always, I would like to hear some feedback from you. Comments, questions, complaints. I'm on Twitter at dvandenboard. Email donnaraviraasset.com or phone 855 Real Wealth. We're <laughs> Real Wealth. Real Wealth. 855 Real Wealth. Wrapping up the week ending and the month ending. Uh, for, as far as the market's concerned, month of October coming to a close. This is Don Vandenborg, telling it like it is, just the facts. Have a great weekend. Thanks for listening.